God bless you and welcome back. This is Restoration Part 3. And this program is brought to you by WME, where we're doing feeding food for hunger programs around the world, where we're uh, building churches in, in many countries around the world. And even here in the U.S., we're working with our food for, uh, food for Hunger program in, in West Virginia and Mission, Texas, and in different parts of the world through disaster relief. So stay connected with WME. And if you want to know more about what we're doing here in the ministry, you can always call us or you can always write us or even look at our webpage. And it'll, it's a very extensive work we're doing around the world. And you'd like to connect with us, please uh, look us up and call us and we'll be glad to give you more information. We are with Pastor Rodney and we're a great subject, the subject of restoration. We yes. looked at Matthew uh, uh, chapter 9, the woman with the issue of blood. Yes. But as we were talking, Pastor, during the break, we were mentioning Saul. Mm -hmm. Saul uh, was being oppressed by a demon. Mm -hmm. And Saul would bring David. Yes. David would play the harp. David was, would calm or would soothe mm -hmm. uh, Saul to a certain extent. Mm -hmm. But he wasn't delivered. Yes. He wasn't set free. Mm -hmm. He was just being calm for the moment. Yes. We need to get past that moment. Correct, Pastor? You could not have said it more accurately. I believe uh, that situation or that scenario, that's where the church is. And, and I, Pastor, I pray that I, I don't give a misunderstanding about prayer. I want to put prayer in its right place. Prayer is a very powerful thing. Yes, yes. But I believe we're using prayer as a crutch, as a, a way of um, casting off our responsibility. In that situation, David came, it soothed him, but you said it did not restore him. The church is praying. We're soothed for the moment, but we're not restored. That's why things get better for you. And out of nowhere, it gets bad again. You pray, it gets better, then it gets bad again. Because there's no restoration. We're just being soothed for the moment. While you were talking, I saw something about restoration. And I hope this picture helps make, make sense. It's almost like a person, there's a house, 10 bedrooms, or 10 rooms, period. You're in one of the rooms. You're comfortable in the room. Everything you do is in that room. You're familiar with the room. You're safe in the room. You know where everything is in the room. You love being in the room, okay? Restoration is like, if somebody blindfolded you, took you out of the room, took you into an open area that you've not seen before, and all the doors look the same, it twisted you around and let you go find your room. And whichever room you go into is the room you're gonna be in. If you go into the wrong room, a lot of people going into the wrong room and they're trying to live in that wrong room mm -hmm. and now they're trying to make do in that room but that's not the room you know you're comfortable you're safe so now you're trying to live life in that room restoration is like somebody taking you out of that room leading you past all the other rooms leading you to the room that you know then when you go back in your room you're safe again yes. restoration is like that i believe a lot of a lot of of people that are viewing us now have gone into the wrong room. They left their place of safety. They left what they know. They left where they're comfortable. And they're living in the wrong room. And they're trying to make life in the wrong room. And I believe Christ is wanting to direct you back to the room, which is him, yes. where you're safe and you're restored. And you can continue back to where you were. Now, I, I, let me say something. I hope this don't take too long. The, the other thing is this. Restoration is the only, restoration says this. I have to be put back to something, but what is it that I have to be put back to? Now, this is the thing. When he said, let us make man, in Genesis 1, he gave a description of what yes. he made us. He said, let us have dominion, let us have authority over everything in the face of the earth. Okay, that's his image of us. That's the, the description he made. When we take on any other mindset, any other description of who we are, we immediately need restoration. Now, normally it shows up when somebody hurt or offended us, that means somebody did something to us, it put another mindset in us. It take, took our mind somewhere else. It made us start thinking something, believing something else, other than what he said. So when he restores us, he want to restore us back to who I said you are, yes. what I said you are, regardless as to what the situation is. So to be totally restored, we have to abandon the new thought process, abandon the emotion, the feeling, and go back to what 
he said I am. And when I get back to what he said I am, now I can start performing what he said I could do. That, that couple that's watching, they can be restored back to that state of, of unity, of, of love, of, of reconciliation. That, that, that uh, those children, those, that person who walked away from the church, you can be restored back in the fellowship. Yes. Today there is hope in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Yes, yes. Just have to know what he said about you. Yes. Now I've learned something. Doesn't matter what my wife said about me. Doesn't matter what my children say about me. Doesn't matter what the church members say. Doesn't matter what my friends say. What did he say? Yes. Sometimes we start believing what people said. We even start believing what the situation said. But what did he say? If we could ever gravitate to what he said and who he said I am, then I could go back through prayer now and through my willingness to abandon what you said about me and start adopting what he said, then I can go back to who he I, said I believe I Isaiah said, I will believe the report of the There Lord. you go. That, yes. That's it. So basically, Isaiah was saying, I will live in a state of restoration. Yes, yes. Every time I go through, I remember what he said. You can come back to that state of restoration. Your marriage can be restored. You can be restored back into the family of God. Jesus loves you. He has a plan and a purpose for your life. Today, you can be set free. Yes. Pastor, we just want to lift up the people who are watching and watching uh, the, this video today that are streaming this uh, YouTube video. And we just, this uh, God to video, or wherever you're watching, whatever uh, format you're watching, there is hope for you today. You can yes. be completely restored. Father, we just pray yes. for our precious audience right now that are watching, Lord. We yes, pray, Lord. Lord, that, Father, they would take the steps to restoration. The woman uh, in, in Matthew chapter 9, Lord, she left where she was at, her comfort zone. Yes. And she made it to touch Jesus' garment. Yes. And she Lord. was restored. Yes. She was made whole. And, Father, we believe that there's marriages, families, and uh, believers that are going to be completely restored yes. in Jesus' in mighty Jesus name. name. Amen and amen. amen. God bless you. Thank you for watching. We'll be back next week with another video. And we want to remind everybody who's watching, for less than $1.50 a day, you can help us support Native missionaries around the world. We'll be bringing you a message of hope next week. God bless you. World missionary evangelism began when John E. Douglas Sr., it's up to the challenge of caring for six orphan children in India. From this act of love spring a work that has grown to include children's homes, schools, leper clinics, vocational and agricultural education, disaster relief, feeding programs, drilling water wells, and building churches. And at the heart of all of WME's work has been living out the Great Commission to take the news of salvation through Jesus to everyone we meet. The evangelism in World Missionary Evangelism is not just a part of our name. It defines our mission, our focus, and is at the heart of everything we do.